the losers game in uh, the Rhythmix RSL Group H. We have an epic game in our hands, guys. Starting to the top left of Whirlwind, we have Team Liquid's TLO, the German Zerg player who lost earlier to Daishi and dropped down to the losers match here in the group. Starting cross position to the bottom right, it is Todd for Team XMG, the French player. He lost earlier against Slivko in the first series, dropped down to the losers match. Both of them want to advance to face Daishi in the consolation match. The loser of this best of three is out. We are in game number one right now, and this is going to be awesome. We have France versus Germany, we have TLO versus Todd, and it's going to be a good game. Overlord already scouting to the bottom left. Tot, on the other hand, well, what is he going to do? We see him again with a pylon in the main base. The last time that he played on Whirlwind, he played with a very early Nexus, had the pylon in the main, used it for his forge, but this time we might actually just see him go into a gateway. Who knows? Gateway openings have become a lot more popular, and there it is, going into the gateway first. And currently, starting to the top left, our Zerg player is starting with a pool. Going into a 14 pool, more of a normal strategy that we see from TLO, at least so far. A lot of players will try to actually edge out that hatch first on a map like Whirlwind. Especially when they are up um, against a Protoss player that might go into the gateway first, as Todd sometimes does. And a lot of uh, Protoss players do this these days. So you can actually save this, but TLO, he doesn't want to take any chances here. He already saw, of course, that earlier on Todd was playing against, um, against Slivko and really liked to use those cannon rushes to just get a whole of his opponent's expansion. So from TLO, maybe he watched those games. Maybe he watched them as like, you know what? You like to go for cannon aggression, for cannon countering. I have to make sure that this is not going to be a problem that I have to deal with. So I am not going to go into the hatch first. Bottom right of the map now, Todd is chrono boosting out additional harvesters while going into the cybernetic score. Let's see what kind of game he plays. Usually what you want to do when you go as a Protoss into the gateway first, you try to just edge out as fast as possible your own expansion. You go into the mothership core so that you have the photon overcharge against early aggression so that you can defend against it. And then you add your additional gateways, two or three depending on how aggressive you want to be. And you have a good shot at taking out a potential third base of your opponent. And TLO, his job right now is to find out that they're ooh, ooh, wow. He's actually going into the third base right away. So usually the job for the Zerg player is to find out what kind of opening the Protoss plays and then react by playing a little bit more safe than usual. The one thing that Naniwa showed the world when he was uh, hitting his dream hack stride in Stockholm and went up to uh, uh, the finals where he faced then Lenok was that with that early gateway the timing for a Protoss to be very aggressive is so powerful and a third base is not easily defended. But TLO is just looking at this and he's like, you know what, I am going to try. I'm actually going to take my third base right now and I will scout and I will try what's going on here. I will try to just make sure that you will not be able to do too much damage. But Todd looks like he's going to commit to that third, third, fourth in total gateway. And now he has four. And that is going to get very, very difficult for TLO to hold if Todd commits. And TLO has to know this. TLO is also not getting gas, which actually surprises me quite a little bit, because usually you want to get that extractor up as soon as you realize that your opponent is getting the gateway first. You need that speed. You want to have that speed out as fast as possible, but TLO is now going into double gas instead. But as you can see, the warp gate research is already halfway completed, and Todd has a lot of opportunities for aggression here. He has also a probe on the map. And I don't know if TLO knows this. He might actually think that this Zergling spotted everything. And the Zergling is just in the wrong spot. I don't think he even saw the Zealot. Oh my god, that could really kill him. Todd is just gonna go for the aggression here. And TLO, he's not going into Zergling speed at all. He's just trying to save it with the Roaches. Getting that extra gas for the Roaches. Pylons everywhere for Todd. He wants to pull this off. He has the production. How many harvesters does he have? He has 32 against 34. And TLO, does he get those uh, roaches right away? He can build them. And I think he will. He's scouting right now and he sees it. He sees it. He's going to build roaches, roaches, nothing else but roaches. He sees it in time. He is actually pulling those off. The Overlord is already moving in. TLO with the right choice here. He has the perfect answer to this, what he's currently scouting. 
He needs the roaches, he needs them in position, and zealots alone, they are not gonna work. Already Todd is changing his plan, he's already going into the Starcade. Stargate. Todd is now up against an opponent that has roaches that skip zerglings all together, and this is not gonna work. He might take down a queen or two, the time warp working very well here, but the queen's now suddenly off creep. Can at least take down a few of those units, but the problem of course being the mothership core, he needs to send another queen over. Oh, he's actually kiting it, but yeah, in the end the queen is going to die here. That limits the production a bit, but to be quite frank, that was a really good defense, didn't lose any harvesters here. Now he can drone up on three bases, takes down the pylon. Those zealots that are heading towards the uh, natural might become an issue, but if he pulls the drones and works with the roaches that are already there, he should be able to make this happen without losing too much. And yeah, you can already see a pretty decent mineral walk here being used by TLO. And he's trying to take units down, Todd that is. But TLO in this, po yeah, in this part of the game, just a little bit too good, takes his opponent's units out without a problem. Two queens, that's what he has. 56 harvesters against 50, and Todd heading into Void Race. And also two gateways. It really looks like the idea of Todd now is to just go into a build where he relies on Void Race and the gateway support. And it's actually a very strong attack. It's something that can take you down. He's also taking a third base. I expected him to actually go for a two base timing when I saw that. But he's going into all of this. Problematic is going to be the TLO heads into uh, the... Uh, um, into uh, the Hydra Den. And with the Hydra Den and Todd not getting a single robotics, TLO will have, have he, he will have a massive time. He will have such a sick timing to take his opponent out. Think about a Roach Hydra army moving down to the bottom right, nothing else but Roach Hydra, and there are no Colossi, and there are no Storms, no High Templars whatsoever. And you can certainly now see that TLO is planning to do that. And why is that? Because he gets the speed before his range. This is something that a lot of players won't do. Even if they plan to hit a timing, they go into the range upgrade before the speed. TLO doesn't do that though. He goes straight into speed. Be why is that? Because the entire duration that it takes his units to cross the map to the bottom right can be used to get the range upgrade. But with the speed, he's going to hit so much faster that it's going to be very difficult for Todd to have the units out. He, that's also why he's trying to spread his creep now to the bottom right of the map. So TLO has the potential to be super aggressive and Todd wants to go into massive Stargate. He goes into Air Toss. He goes into triple Stargate right now. That is going to be pretty epic. Fourth base also coming up here. The Hydras are on the way. TLO with the Infestation Pit but moving down already with his army. Speed upgrade for the Hydras. It's going to be done in a second. The Hallucination is going to... not going to fall. Yeah, it's going to fall. But now, let's see, how can he defend against this? Will he be able to somehow make this happen? Oh my god, with the kiting alone, this is going to be so tough for Todd. Can Todd somehow make this work? Here comes the Time War, pinning those Hydras down. But there are so many of them. He's using the overcharge ability on the Void Race. But TLO is already backing off a little bit. He's backing off, he's getting the range upgrade now. Is he going to commit? Will he use the infestation pit? Will he go into the pathogen glance upgrade to get those infestors out? We have spore crawlers being built, and that's something that he definitely needs. But this army, this could do a lot. The number of void rays is only four. It's only four void rays. 18, 18 hydralists. He's moving in, he's trying to bait those force fields out at a good time, and they actually shield his army against those zealots. The zealots already low in shields. They're now Another set of void rays out though. TLO might up be, be up against too much. This might be in exactly what Todd needs here. Can those void rays be defeated? It doesn't really look like it. The rest of the reinforcements are just not there. TLO doesn't have his army together. He's running away with what he has. Todd is currently beating his opponent back, but we have at the same time the hive tech being started halfway done, and we also have the fourth base mining. Todd has the army supply on the other hand. 70 moving in and TLO. What is he trying to do? Vipers? What else can he do? Certainly not going to be Ultralisks. I can only see him getting Vipers here. Vipers and trying to lure those units. Oh, we have another Overlord heavy supply block here. I can only see him using Vipers and trying to lure those, those, yeah, the abduct, just abduct the units into the Hydra range. That's the only thing that they can come up with. But he has an infestation pit. Why not get a couple of infestors out for the fungals? Wouldn't that be a little bit better for him? He doesn't think so. 
He is, he is trying to just lure them in. He is up one base. As long as he doesn't fight, it's gonna be fine. And he has now, he has the hive tech. TLO has to show us what he wants to do here. So far he doesn't use his tech. He's saturating his base to the left side of the map. He has the gas taken. Todd is down one base. Pylon scouted by a TLO, very important. Supply block now for Todd and ooh, TLO taking another base right away. Double Zealot right over here. Economy, that is where TLO, TLO wants to win this game. This is where he wants to win it. He wants to win it in the macro game. Plus two is nearly done. The Hive Tech also allows him to go into the plus three attack upgrade and he gets it. But is that really the only reason why he gets Hive? I doubt it, I highly doubt it. That would be a very, very expensive plus three attack upgrade. No armor upgrades for him, no double upgrades. Scout already at the base of the top right. Being taken out by the Zealot. Another set of Zealots is walking to the left side and that Spinecrawler is not done. The Queen alone might be able to take down the Zealot. Upgrade count is now, look at this upgrade count. Plus two attack, plus three attack coming in and we only have plus one air, army, uh, air weapons. But that, up, uh, that army is still strong. A snipe on the Nexus, that's what he needs here. Nah, the cancel in the last second for Todd. His entire army is at the side. Oh my god, Todd has been fooled. He has been fooled. He might lose another base. Oh my god, he will. He's gonna lose this. He's gonna lose this. He has no way. He go oh, the recall! Oh, oh my god. That was so close. The mothership core is saving his base. I can't believe that. I actually did completely forget about the recall ability here. Oh wow. Todd, he probably has a pulse of like 250 right now. That was really, really close for him. Base at the top right is still alive. Those units with another run by attempt. Right now they are pulling a forest gump here, running away as fast as they can. And they certainly need to. Here come those vipers. That's what we were waiting for. Not only the plus three attack upgrade, no. Vipers for the abducts. First one already here. Couple of additional evolution chambers for the consume would be important. Uh, charge Dallas to the top right. And we still have the, vi uh, the hydras here. And that's actually what Todd tries to trap. But he cannot really do that. He is losing a few units. But the base here, is that going to be saved by the Hydralists? Yeah, most likely. Most likely. He has enough of them. He has the DPS. God is that once again a tense game. Both of them at 200 supply. Nidus Network. Oh my god. This is currently... I am having a nerdgasm here. That is, that is awesome. I love players that actually do those little things so late in the game. Usually we see all these things just like with timings. But this is a completely different ball game. And TLO looks at this and he's like, you know what, I cannot hold this base. I'm not ready just yet. He even gets Overlord drops. Oh my god. My wet Zerg dreams are coming through here. Base gone though. TLO is still, I mean, he's doing great things here. But can he really, can he really make this work? I actually think that he's only using that Nidus network to have a retreat path for his, uh, for his units here. And here come those here come those vipers with the abduct. We have a split army. He's trying to bait out. Can he recall? I think he can. No, he does. Yeah, he can soon. But like, there's so much DPS already done, and now he's moving in. Todd is actually being completely forced back. He's trying to run away. We he's trying to run away, and oh, the DTs. Here's the one base, and here's another one. Everything is being eliminated. And TLO, can he drop an item somewhere, evacuate all his units, all his army, he's running away with the drones, he has a bit of a bang, getting those Archons into the spine crawlers, trying to abduct them again, good force fields here by Todd, he has so many void waves and they are so strong, but he's losing so much at the bottom right, the drop ability is also nearly completed, he can just get all those units back to safety, one void ray is down, he's losing units, and there comes another abduct, the army supply, 100 for Todd, 75 for TLO, and the Todd is lagging, but only for a second. No Nidus use just yet, ah, oh, there come the force fields once again, Todd with Smicro, the unit control, really good for him, but TLO is moving in from two angles right now, trying to snipe as many units as possible, the income at this point is better for Todd, he still has mining bases, he still has a mining base and TLO is running out of steam and he has to type GG, he doesn't have the income anymore, the satellite bases are gone and his army is not strong enough anymore, he does not have these bases to the top right or bottom left that would have enabled him to stay in the game a 
little bit longer. Todd with a 1-0. He takes the lead in the loser's match here. The Rhythmix RSL. And we are going into game number two.